everyone. I'm Jensen Ribeiro, and this is a joint work with uh, Matthias Thing. And in this work, what you do is to introduce uh, the notion of tacit culpability measures, and you use these new measures to construct rational consolidation functions. So actually, I'd like to start the talk giving a brief explanation of what consolidation is. So consolidation is basically a process whose the purpose is to remove the inconsistency in a knowledge base. So just to illustrate that, I have here a knowledge base that inconsistent because I have these two formulae here, P not P, which clearly is consistent with each other. So if I want to consolidate this knowledge base, the simple idea is to remove these two uh, formulae. I stay with the conjunction P and Q. But an issue in consolidation is that we do not wish only to remove the inconsistency, but we also want to minimally change the knowledge base in order to restore the consistency. And for this example here on purpose, I made a choice where we can actually say that's uh, not a minimal choice because I retain the conjunction P and Q, which from it, I still entail the formula P. But if I still believe in P, why have I removed this then? So this is not a minimal choice. So basically, we need some minimal um, minimal check principle to guide consolidation, and this minimal this principle of minimal change is conceptualized via a set of rational postulates. I not discuss the rationale of these postulates here, but uh, just to illustrate one of them and compare with an example. Let's look at relative closure with four bits. That spurious choice that I made of keeping only P and Q what relative closure is going to say yes okay if you want to keep p and q so please also keep p do not remove more than you should so on one hand we have this set of rational postulates that give some notion of minimal change but what you really want is to construct a consolidation operation that satisfy these um rationality criteria and one of the strategies is to use smooth kernel consolidations and uh, these operations, was, what they do is basically to slice your knowledge base into minimal um, inconsistent subsets, what you call here minimal inconsistent kernels. But for the purpose of this talk, let us just show these two kernels, okay? And for this knowledge base of the example, you have precisely two kernels, the one with P and not P, and the second one for the conjunction P and Q and not P. And what you do, so for each of these uh, kernels, you choose at least one formula to be removed. And this choice is realized by a function that's called an incision function. But the problem here is that, as you illustrated with the previous example, you cannot simply uh, make an arbitrary choice. So I cannot just choose P and not P because you saw that's not a minimal change. You're not satisfied those rationality postulates. So basically, this choice needs to satisfy some minimal criteria in order to um capture to satisfy those rational like postulates and the condition that you need here to constrain this choice these decision functions is the smoothness property here i do not wish to open the definition of smoothness um in this talk because we don't have time for that but suffice it to say that this property captures those uh rational like postulates but in terms of a choice so it dictates what is rational to choose what is a rational choice so just to illustrate that a smooth incision function, smooth choice here would be to choose not P within the intersection of these both kernels here. So I'm gonna choose not P and remove it from my knowledge base. And as you can see, I keep P and Q and P as relative closure and the other postulates tell us. So basically from this strategy, you construct this class of uh, consolidation function called smooth kernel consolidations because it's based on this smooth choice and this is smooth incision function. And in the literature, you know that uh, this is smooth kind of consolidation operations, they are characterized by those set of rationality like postulates. So we have a representation theorem here. So basically, you know how to operate consolidation, but the problem here, the key problem here is that the scan of consolidation functions, they depend on this choice mechanism. And this choice mechanism these uh, incision functions, they need to be smooth. And the question here is, how do I construct a smooth uh, incision functions? How do I construct a smooth choices? From where these choices come from? You don't know from where they come, now they know how to construct and guarantee the smoothness property. So basically, in this work, uh, what you propose was to use culpability measures 
as a device to realize these uh, this choice mechanisms, to realize the epistemic choice of the agent and try to guarantee that this choice is rational. It yields smooth incision functions. So just to explain what a culpability measure is, so a culpability measure is basically a function that tries to assess the responsibility degree uh, that a formula alpha knowledge base has its responsibility in producing consistency. So basically, how culpable is your formula alpha in producing consistency? And basically, you can use this culpability measure to construct those incision functions. So just to illustrate that in the example, let's look at one culpability measure that's very simple. So the idea is uh, as follows. So the degree of culpability of a formula alpha in a knowledge base consists in the number of inconsistent kernels that a formula alpha participates in. So if you remember well that example that I just showed in the previous slide, not P was in two inconsistent kernels. So the degree of culpability of not P is true. So you just count that. And basically for each inconsistent can, we're gonna choose the formula with the highest probability measure. And in this way, you construct our incision function. So in that example, the highest one is not P, that's degree two are removed not P. So you can construct incision functions based in this idea of using culpability measure to disclose this epistemic choice. The problem is that these culpability measures in the literature, they are not strong enough to yield smooth incision functions. So there's that something missing. You cannot trust these culpability measures. And then what you want to construct is stronger culpability measures that will yield these smooth choices. What you claim in this work is actually the problem with this culpability measure is that they focus on the explicit degree of culpability and they do not measure what for a tacit culpability. So just to explain better what's the difference between these two calls and as I'm talking here, I'm gonna use an example. So let's move now to another knowledge base and I want to assess the degree of culpability of this formula P here. And if I use that culpability measure of our previous slide that counts the number of inconsistent kernels, I would say that P has degree three because it has three inconsistent kernels he uh, outlined in these red boxes. But what happens is that I claim that P also has a tacit role of culpability, an implicit degree of culpability. And then just to explain that, let's move to this another inconsistent kernel here in red, where P is not here, but actually P participates, is culpable in producing consistency in this inconsistent kernel, though P is not there. And the reason for that is because I have this subset here in blue, R join with R implies P entails P. And if you look closer, it's P itself that jointly with the conjunction on P and not Z, we produce inconsistency. So you say that P has a tacit, implicit role of culpability. And basically what you want to do is to combine both explicit roles of culpability with tacit role of culpability. You want to measure them and then you assemble in order to be able to construct culpability measures that are strong enough to yield smooth incision functions. And how you do that? So basically our strategy here is to use to calculate to define the tacit role of culpability, but in a partial and cumulative strategy. So basically, initially we define the tacit rule, the tacit degree of culpability of some formulae in your knowledge base, not necessarily all of them, and then you assemble them with the explicit counterparts. And then for the remaining ones on your knowledge base, you define that recessively, and you can show that this recessive function actually converts to a fixed point. And then the culpability uh, degree of this formula will boils down to the value uh, that's given by this fixed point, okay? You show that it converts to a fixed point, but of course the existence of this fixed point depends on how we would define this partial tacit degree of culpability. So we give an idea on how you define that. So for that, let's go back to that uh, example of that uh, knowledge base where you saw that P has a tacit role of culpability. And the reason for that was the subset here now in red, R and R implies P. So you say that this subset in red is a witness of the tacit role of P. And our strategy to disclose this tacit uh, degree of culpability of P is to use a strategy of maximize and minimize distances between the witness of P, the formulas in the subset in red, to P. We'll give a proper definition of distances in the paper, but I want to focus here in the talk more in the intuition. 
So on purpose, I have sense of the definition. I want to focus on the intuition here. So the idea is that you minimize the distance between each formula in this subset in red to P. But what happens is that P might have all the weakness of its tacit rule. That is another set here. So basically what you do for each of these weaknesses, we minimize the distances, but overall what you want is to maximize the distances. And this strategy of minimizing, maximizing distances is what gives us as the partial tacit rule of culpability of P. We do that for each formula in the knowledge base until you reach that fixed point that you say that's guaranteed to exist. And the culpability degree of each formula in the knowledge base would be the value by assembly explicitly and partial tacit cumulative uh, parts that converge to this fixed point. And uh, this class of culpability measure that based on this fixed point uh, approach, you call a stable tacit culpability measure, is a class of culpability measures. And actually show that these stable tacit culpability measures, they are strong enough to yield smooth choices, therefore smooth kernel consolidation functions, but also any smooth kernel consolidation function can be realized by a tacit culpability measure. You can use one to realize those choices. So I have a representation theorem here, but actually later we're able to prove something even stronger. So basically, if you are able to construct a smooth kernel consolidation function via, ta via culpability measure, then this culpability measure necessary is a stable tacit culpability measure. So the idea is that this class of stable tacit culpability measures are the best that you can do using culpability measures. There's no way to, to run away from the stable tacit culpability measures. They're the best that you can do looking for culpability measures. So I believe I do not have much time to discuss much of the future works here, uh, but basically some straightforward direct idea would be to extend this idea of using measures to disclose this epistemic uh, choice mechanism to construct this smooth and rational choices, but also to extend this to other forms of belief change, like contraction, pseudo contraction, safety contractions, other forms of, uh, of belief change uh, operations. So thank you so much for your attention, and I hope to see some of you during the post session. Thank you so much.